Hey, what's up guys? This is Lance from Biochem TV, and today I'm going to show you how to identify the pKa's of your amino acid using your titration data. To do this, we're going to need to plot our data and find the equivalence points. And from there, we can calculate each pKa. So we're here in Excel. I have some acid titration data for an unknown amino acid titration. The first column is the volume of HCl titrated in, and the second column is the corresponding pH. The first thing we should do is plot our data. So to do this, we're going to click on Insert and go to a scatter plot. We're going to right click and choose Select Data. We're going to add a series. We're going to label it Titration. Choose our X values. Our X values are going to be our volume. So we'll select all of those. Our Y values, we'll delete that equals 1 and we'll select all of our pH data for our Y values. And then we'll hit OK and OK again. So let's make this plot look a little bit better. So first thing we'll do is delete this heading here. We'll add labels for each of our axes. So we'll go to Chart Tools, Design, Add Chart Element, Axis Titles, We'll make our horizontal axis milliliters HCl titrated. We'll do the same thing for our y axis, which is simply our pH. And if you want to, you can go ahead and change the way your actual data looks. You can change the color and the symbol if you want to. So just looking at this, it's kind of hard to see exactly where the equivalence points are. We can see a couple of steep areas, but it'd be a lot easier if we could do this mathematically. So we're going to use a little bit of basic calculus to help us out. We're going to calculate the first derivative, the change in pH with respect to volume. To do that, we're going to add three new columns, change in volume, change in pH, and change in pH with respect to volume. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we have change in volume change in pH, and change in pH with respect to volume. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate all these values. So for change in volume, we're just going to subtract the previous volume from each row. So we'll start in the second row here. We'll do equals that volume minus the previous. Hit enter. And then we'll autofill for every other row by double clicking on this little square in the bottom right of the cell. Now we're going to do the same thing for pH. So we have equals that row's pH minus the previous rows. Hit enter and we'll double click to autofill again. And now for our derivative, we're going to take the absolute value, so equals ABS parentheses change in pH divided by change in volume, close our parentheses, enter and then we'll double click again to autofill. Now the absolute value isn't 100% necessary, but it makes all of our peaks positive and it makes it easier to visualize the data. So now let's add the derivative to the plot. So we're going to do that just like before. We're going to right click on the plot, choose select data, add a series. We'll name it dph over dvol. Our X values are still going to be our volume, so we'll select all of those. And our Y values will be our newly calculated derivative column. Click OK and OK. And now our chart kind of looks like a mess. So what we want to do is select any one of these points on the derivative plot. Go to Format format selection, and we're going to make our derivative a secondary axis. Now we can close this, and we can make the appearance of our derivative look a little bit better. So we'll go back and format selection again, click on the paint bucket. This time we want a solid line with a one point width. We'll make it a different color, I'll make mine blue, and we'll turn off the marker. Now we can close this, and we have a pretty good looking plot here. So now the peaks on our derivative plot give us the equivalence points. 
we can see one huge peak right here. So we know for sure that is an equivalence point. And we can zoom in to find the other ones. So let's go and record this first one that we have. So mousing over that point, we see that the x value for that is 4.6. So we'll start another table here at the right. And this can be our EQ volume, and 4.6 is our first one. So let's zoom in and see if we can find the other ones. So we'll click our secondary y-axis, go to Format Selection again, and instead of going all the way to 25, we'll just go to 5. Now we can close this, and now we can clearly see three other equivalence points. We have this one right here, another one right there, and a third one right there. So let's find the x values for those as well. So we'll mouse over this first one, and we see the x value for that is 2.2. .2. So let's go ahead and record that. This next one is 6.9. And this last one is 9.2. So we want these equivalence volumes in ascending order, so I'll go ahead and swap these two. So 2.2 .2 and 4.6. And we know that there is a pKa between each adjacent equivalence point. So with four equivalence points, we should have three pKa's. So let's find the volume for each pKa. To do this, we're going to take the average of each adjacent pair of equivalence point volumes, and we'll double click to autofill. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and start a new column here for pKa volume. And we'll take the average of two adjacent points. So we'll have equals average, parentheses, and we'll select these first two, close our parentheses, and we'll drag it down for the next two pairs. So we have three pKa volumes here. So now all we have to do is look up these volumes in our original data. So we'll scroll over here, look at our volumes. So we're looking for 3.4 first. So at 3.4, we had a pH of 9.79. So our first pKa is 9.79. And now we're going to look for 5.75. So we don't have a 5.75, but we do have a 5.7 and a 5.8. So what we can do is highlight the pH values for those two. And then down here at the bottom, it tells us that's an average of 4.2. So we'll use 4.2 as our second pKa. And now we'll scroll down and look for a volume of 8.05. Same as before, we have 8 and 8.1, so we'll highlight these two pHs, and we see that that is an average of 2.23, and so that gives us our third and final pKa of 2.23. And So as you can see here, we have values of 2.23, 4.2, and 9.79, which are really close to the accepted values for glutamic acid, which is what I used here. And so now you know how to find the pKa's for an amino acid using titration data, Excel, and a little bit of calculus. So thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you in any way, be sure to like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos. Thanks, guys.